Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 1st, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm reporting from Nashville, Tennessee. Just a quick update on the SMB denial of service attack that I talked about yesterday, also known as SMB Loris. One of the questions that came up is if this again just affects SMB version 1. It does appear to affect all versions of SMB. And uh, actually one user on Twitter is reporting that on Windows 10, he tried to disable all versions of SMB and the system was still vulnerable. Now, once you disable all versions of SMB, of course, there may still be a daemon listening on 445. It will just reject any request. But then again, this particular request is initial as the connection is being set up. So it may still be accepted. So that's why I don't discount this particular report. And remember standard best practice like disabling port 445 on your perimeter will prevent this attack and it's only a denial of service even though a nasty one in that it does require the system to be rebooted manually. And Microsoft on Friday released a security update for Outlook. This particular update fixes three different vulnerabilities, the worst of which can be used to execute arbitrary code. In order to trigger the vulnerability, the user has to first open an attachment. Now, this also supersedes an update that was released in June. The June update had a number of problems. These problems have also been addressed with this latest patch. So don't be too surprised if you do see the pop-up for an update for Microsoft Outlook. And this does not appear to be just a re-release of the June update because the CVE numbers for these three vulnerabilities are different from the ones being addressed in June. So this is June's update plus fixes for bugs introduced by the June update plus fixes for new vulnerabilities. And SecureWorks last week reported at Black Hat that they believe to have uncovered a fake social media profile that was used by Iranian hackers in order to make contact with executives in the oil and gas industry. This particular profile used the name of Mia Ash and claimed to be a young professional photographer in London. Now, the typical advice that people give here is that you should be careful as to who you may contact with in social media. I'm actually thinking here a little bit different. It doesn't really matter in the end how careful you are when it comes to who you may contact with because often your contacts themselves can expose details about you. On the other hand, it's in my opinion more important that you're careful what you're posting on social media and that you are aware that anything you do post to social media is essentially public no matter how you label it within the social media's context. Information from social media, of course, can be used in order to help a social engineering attack where you then make a particular attachment or an email more plausible by using a from address and a name that is familiar to the recipient. And researchers from the Politecnico di Milano in Italy came up with an interesting file system extension that they're calling Shield FS. Shield FS is designed to detect and protect from ransomware as well as other malware that will modify a large number of files. In order to create this file system, they essentially try to figure out how ransomware behaves differently from normal software. And in doing so, they did have a number of volunteers that agreed to have their file system activity monitored while they were using normal software and then compared this to what ransomware looks like. Of course, with ransomware, 
you have software that not only reads a large number of files, but also opens a large number of directories and then changes and writes to a large number of files. This kind of combination of activity is very typical for ransomware and ShieldFS will block this activity. It will also keep past versions of files, so as a result, it's able to automatically recover already encrypted files. Looks pretty interesting. They posted a video on YouTube that demonstrates what they did. Didn't see any links to any source code that is published, so not sure how they will release this particular file system in the future. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.